Hi everybody, this is Heidi Larsen at Plus7. Sorry that I've been away from you guys for a while. I have been super busy, which is very happy, but now I also feel kind of guilty. So I'm now back with more tips on doing business in China for you guys. So as you've probably heard a hundred times by now, um, things are not getting cheaper in, to produce in, in China. Actually, salaries are going up, material costs are going up, overheads are going up, um, and, and the cost is just generally uh, increasing when producing in China. So if uh, you have been as much in China as I have for the past years, uh, maybe you've been wondering uh, that as things are still cheaper in mainland China, and by mainland I mean like inside uh, the, the, great, uh, the great country, um, maybe a little bit away from, from the eastern coasts, uh, why doesn't the factories just move inland to save cost in regards to overhead and rent and in some cases even taxes and salaries and such? Uh, well, this is due to the power of network. Um, because as I've been speaking to, to many factory owners and general managers in, in the past years, um, they are very dependent on their Guangxi Wang, uh, their network, you could say. Uh, they need to know where to go if they need a favor. They need to know where to go if they need a certain kind of material. They need to know where to go if they need it faster and at what cost and, and so forth. And, and the reason why they don't move it in, uh, inside the, the country is, um, is really because of this network. Because they're afraid that they have to spend a lot of effort setting up a new network in mainland or inland China or, or how to say. Um, and, and this is really why that uh, either everyone should move at the same time or they should uh, use a lot of effort to, to develop the same Guanxi Wang uh, in inland or, or mainland China. So this is why they don't move uh, to lower cost facilities and or areas of, of lower salary costs. So how does how do we keep the cost down then uh, if we're still uh, producing in, in China and as uh, most of the factories are still uh, placed by the eastern coasts? Um, maybe we, you would like to get uh, a few tips on how you could control the cost better. So I have prepared seven tips uh, as to how you can keep your cost at the lowest possible uh, price points. First off, use a cost breakdown. Uh, I know that we have been talking about this for, for many times and on many occasions. And uh, yes, it is still possible to introduce cost breakdowns to your suppliers, even though you produce as little as, let's say, 250 uh, pieces of a style in a certain color. Um, you might not need, um, say, nine columns, or you might not need a, a super detailed cost breakdown, but if you could just persuade your supplier to kind of fix it into material cost, uh, production cost, and, and after production cost. Then you will still know uh, what you're paying for in, in which area of the process and, and how you can control that cost better. So that's tip number one. Tip number two will be uh, maybe you also have a network in Europe. Maybe you will have some competitors or maybe you will have some business partners producing in the same materials as you. Maybe you could join forces and uh, together team up to uh, achieve lower price points at the supplier sites in China. Um, maybe not uh, a competitor who is producing the same product as you, but uh, please note that I said material, meaning that uh, maybe you both produce in steel, but maybe one is producing, I don't know, um, tableware and maybe another is producing for the industry or, or building facilities or such. Maybe you could join forces to, to meet the, the supplier at, um, at a, a certain lower price point if you could join forces. That's just an idea. That's tip number two. Tip number three will be to control your scrap. Um, in regards to the QC sheets, in regards to the general quality of your item, please be aware of how much is actually scrapped from your production. Because one thing you can be absolutely sure about is you're going to pay for that scrap one way or the other. It's going to be added to your cost later on, so better 
uh, know exactly uh, which amount has been scrapped from your production because that could also help you to recalculate the future cost and, and also it could be that you could have a suggestion as to how to lower that scrap rate and, and thereby keep uh, your prices at the lowest possible price points. Yeah. Tip number four will be to plan long term instead of short term. Um, maybe you could take advantage of uh, the supplier's uh, lower points in, in the season. Maybe he will have some months uh, throughout the year that are not uh, fully booked yet. Maybe you could plan uh, well ahead and maybe already now, uh, here by the end of 2014, maybe you can take a look at uh, the summer period in, in the production facilities in, in 2015. Maybe they will have some slots open that are lower, um, um, lower seasoned uh, at the supplier site. Um, but definitely you could take advantage of these uh, lower peak seasons if, if you know them and know where they're placed in, in the calendar year. Tip number five will be to, instead of placing continuous orders at the supplier, maybe you could produce uh, or place bigger orders at the suppliers and just make them in ship out in, in drop shipments. Because the bigger the order, the, the bigger the power. Um, and uh, if you place uh, bigger orders and if you place greater volumes, uh, the supplier will know that you're coming back with this. Instead of saying, this order of, let's say, just 1,000 pieces will be repeated every, let's say, second month uh, throughout the year, then maybe place an order for 10,000 pieces and just make the drop shipments throughout the year. That could also give you an advantage. Tip number seven, money talks. It really does. Um, keep your promises. I know I've been saying that many times, but really, if you say you're going to pay on a certain date, pay on a certain date. Um, if you lose face or, or if you lose your, your credit in, in the way that you don't honor your promise to your supplier, why should they keep their promises? So make sure that, uh, that the payments are kept and, and that the dates are honored from your side as well. Last tip number seven is um, every factory or every supplier will have a bottleneck. Maybe you could uh, investigate this a little bit. Maybe you could look into where this bottleneck is, uh, is placed and, and maybe you will have suggestions or solutions to, to that bottleneck that could help improve the productions uh, for all of the suppliers' clients or, or customers. Um, that could mean a stronger relationship to or, or with your supplier and, and that could also benefit you in, in terms of keeping the, the price points low. So that was seven tips from me on how to, uh, to keep your lowest possible price points at your supplier, uh, given the fact that all the prices in, in general are increasing in China still. I hope you, uh, you found them useful. If you have any questions or comments to this video, you are always welcome to contact me at info at plus seven.dk. Uh, and as always, you're also welcome to, to look into my book at the Amazon. Uh, there are many, 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 many more tips in, in that book. So if you should need any further, maybe you could look into that. But um, until we talk next time, see you then. Tai Chen. Bye.